All right, so welcome back to Stoffer Garage. Today we're detailing a 2006 Bentley Continental GT on the inside and the outside. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button down below, turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on new videos. Go ahead and hit the like button while you're at it for the YouTube algorithm. And let's go ahead and get started on this exterior wash. Why you wanna run away? Why you gotta be afraid? I wish I could make you stay. Now with a nice coat of water sprayed across his exterior to let that start soaking into some of that dirt that's on the surface, we're going to tackle the wheels first and we're using all-purpose wheel cleaner, spraying it on, and then we're using all my detailing tools that I use on my wheels to make sure all the barrels are scrubbed clean, along with all those little nooks and crannies and those special little bolts that make these Bentley wheels look as nice as they are. Now the wheel's all clean and rinsed off, now we're going to jump to the foam cannon stage and I have a special treat for you guys. This is colored spray foam and it looks awesome on the car and you'll see the two colors here shortly as it changes. But the main reason why we're using the foam is to soak the surface, allow that dirt and grime to kind of, you know, lift itself from the paint and all those bugs and stuff get loosened up so that way when we rinse them off and we get to the uh, dual bucket method with the wash mitts, we don't have any of that dirt and grime sitting on there causing any further scratching. Now with all that beautiful foam rinsed off, the car already looks a ton better. It took literally most of the dirt off the surface, allowing it to drip down with that heavy foam uh, laying on the paint. But once it's all completely rinsed off, we'll get started with the wash mitt phase. Now with the dual bucket method and your wash mitt, always start with the top of the car, work your way down across the hood and the, and the rear trunk lid, and then work down the sides, and then do the front and rear bumper last, along with the lower rocker panels on the sides. Now to get into the nitty gritty, I'm using Fox Clean detailing brushes to get into this grill. Any of those seam lines, especially around the headlights or where the hood and the bumper meet together and those front grills, it really does help with making sure that you get into all those little nooks and crannies, get all that dirt removed so that way when the car is dry at the very end, you're not looking back saying, ah oh, crap, I missed a spot. They definitely come in handy, especially with emblems. Now 
Now for only 50,000 miles, this Bentley has a lot of swirl marks from probably growing to the car wash a ton, tons of rock chips on the front bumper, a lot of surface scratches and dents. And because of that, the dealership asked me not to spend the time to ceramic coat it, polish it, get rid of all the scratches, do the whole paint correction thing. Um, they just asked me to clay bar it and do a spray on ceramic coating. So that way they get, you know, the best bang for their buck in time. But also for me, it saves me a ton of time and effort. It doesn't make the car look perfect, but it does look a lot better than it did before. Now there's a lot of ceramic sprays in the market, but this one is a special one. This one has 30% silica content. And because of that, the easiest way in my opinion to apply it is have a wet car like this, spray it on the entire surface of the paint, and then take a clean microfiber towel to buff it essentially and spread it around evenly to make sure it's coating every single part of the paint surface evenly before you rinse it off with the hose. And the effect is insane. I'll show you here shortly how big of a difference it made to the paint with it before and after this coating. And here's the before, literally no sheeting whatsoever, no water beating at all. It's literally just sticking to the surface and takes a ton of time to spray off. But once that spray coating was applied to the wet paint and then rinsed off, this is the effect. It literally beads the water off. It makes drying so much easier, but it also protects the paint, which is exactly what we want. Now here's an even better money shot without the spray nozzle on of just the water beating off the surface. And this is what makes drying so much easier. It makes taking care of your car just a piece of cake. And if you don't already, make sure you head over to Fox Clean after the video to get these drying towels because they make your life so much easier. This one big towel will dry your entire car's surface. Windows, paint, bumpers, everything. They're running out of stock very, very quickly. And if you haven't picked it up already, make sure you do. I also have a coupon code in the description box for you guys for 15% off. Make sure you guys use it for all your detail and supplies and pick up your supplies today at foxclean.com after the video. Now for everyone, this car was warmed up. I know there's gonna be a few of you that are gonna ask that question if I was you know, revving it without warming it up first, but it was definitely warmed up. And I will say that this does have the W12 twin turbo engine from Volkswagen. It does sound pretty nice. Now something that does happen quite frequently with a lot of these details is you have things that are broken and in this case all of the drain tubes in the trunk were definitely not hooked up appropriately so all of that water dumped into the trunk which will get cleaned up eventually anyways and all that stuff's coming out so it's not a huge deal. Um, definitely unexpected and I do like to fix things so I reconnected all the drain tubes and connected the carpet and the cargo cover on there uh, before sending it back to the dealership. I don't know if this is like a pattern with the last several videos, but like a tweeter fell off when I was vacuuming, something else happened. And in this case, the start button popped off when I was vacuuming the center console here, trying to get any dirt and grime removed. 
Good thing is though, my vacuum was cleaned out before this, so I pulled it out and this thing just popped right back in. But I will say this happens quite a bit. There's always something that falls off or breaks in some of these older cars. It's just something that happens. But once again, able to fix it, put it back on and continue with the rest of the vacuuming. Now with all that water in the trunk, it definitely had some draining issues before and we did have a lot of rain in Ohio recently. So as I pulled out this cargo cover, pulled out this drain thing, pulled out all of the spare tire equipment, this whole wheel pan here was full of water. So later on I cleaned it out completely, but it had a lot of water in it, probably a good half a gallon to a gallon of water that had to be removed and definitely pulled out. Now for all these interior panels, it's just all purpose cleaner diluted 10 to 1, Fox Clean detailing brushes, and just pretty much scrub, agitate, whatever word, adjective you want to use to make sure all that dirt's lifted, especially out of all those leather seams and stitches before wiping it clean with a microfiber towel. Always get asked about spraying directly on the surfaces and and all that liquid getting in between those buttons and everything you got to remember that a lot of these cars operate in very humid climates and if you have your windows up and you have a drink in there humidity is going to get into all these components as it is and if you're not overly saturating you're not spraying like crazy these things are tested these cars are definitely made to get you know moisture and humidity in the surfaces 
but all those connectors are typically um, sealed with rubber connectors to make them humidity proof or waterproof, if you will, to an extent. Um, I definitely don't recommend you dunk a you know gallon of water and pour it on it, but when you spray it on like this, you pretty much don't have anything to worry about. So if you're detailing your own car, don't fret, don't be scared, just don't go crazy. Now, I've mentioned before, this is the reason why I like to pull seats out. One, because camera angles get really tricky, but two, it's like a contortionist thing to get inside the car and clean some seats sometimes, especially when it's you know super tight inside like this coupe. Um, but leather cleaner and conditioner applied to all the leather seats and all the leather door panels, um, but they, they looked insane by the end of this video. Now I want you guys to comment down below, what do you use when you clean your carpets? I have several different things that I use that I've talked about, but for this one I tried something different. I have a carpet cleaning solution, but I threw in a little OxyClean as well to try to get some of the stains out. Um, it seems to do an okay job, but I know you guys have commented some different concoctions that you've tried. If you have any that you personally use that work really well, let me know in the comments below for me personally, but also for all you guys that watch. <laughs> My voice definitely just cracked. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this voiceover clip in there because it's awesome. Hashtag puberty. Um, anyways, uh, leave those comments below because this is this is a community. I want you guys to be able to gain knowledge, learn things from not just me, but from other detailers or other viewers that you guys watch. Um, this is something that I want this community of viewers and subscribers to be able to share information and to learn because the whole point of this channel is for all of us to up our detailing game.
like I mentioned earlier, the water had been kind of draining in this trunk for quite a while, as you can see from the surface rust, but um, soaked up all the water, sprayed it with all-purpose cleaner, used a brush to try to get as much of the surface rust off, and then just wiping it clean with a microfiber towel is really all I could do to get that cleaned. common question I get is how do I dry out the carpets? I just have a simple box fan that I either point inside the car or on the carpets directly sitting on top of Tupperware containers and let those sit overnight so that way that airflow gets all that moisture removed and they're dry when I put them back in the car. Now this video is definitely a change of pace than a lot of the vehicles I've done recently. This wasn't overly dirty, but it definitely needed to be detailed on the inside and outside. But now it looks brand new, especially for the dealership to sell. And it's probably what you guys see on your personal cars on a day-to-day -day -day basis. So I hope you enjoyed the process that I follow and you guys can use some of the tips and tricks that I used in this video. Um, and if you liked it, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I always try to get back to you guys, answer any questions that you have, um, and I will see you guys in next week's video.